Welcome GibbsCam users. Today we're going to show you how to use volume mill using a drill as the entry point. Now we know that volume mill works fantastic for uh, roughing out cavities or open sides or solids or whatever you'd like to throw at it, it works very well. But on, uh, as you know, if you've ever used volume mill, let me bring it up here. You have just a couple of plunge types that you can do. It's either helix, ramp, or do not plunge. And of course you can do your step over, step downs, whatever you like to do. And if we run the standard volume mill, say in um, helix there, you can see it's of course going to helix down. Speed this up here and do our multiple steps. But sometimes the helix takes a long time to get down in there. And uh, of course, where's the end of your end mill out a little bit faster. So uh, we can also do uh, ramping. And of course, in ramping, you can see it's ramping down. Let's slow that down. And as you can see, it's ramping down. Sometimes that even takes a long time to do. So ideally, what some people want to do and uh, makes sense is to uh, drill a hole uh, before you start end milling and then have the end mill come down inside that hole and then cut out the cavity. So that's what we're going to show you here on some quick little videos here. The key to it is that you have to have uh, multiple processes here. So let's just start with our first process here and we'll choose drilling and let's let's choose a drill that's uh, the drill has of course has to be bigger than the end mill you're going to go down in the hole with otherwise uh, you will not get the tool path so for instance if I did a three-quarter inch drill and I used a three-quarter inch end mill for the volume mill tool path And let's just click on this cavity here. If I run that, let me de deactivate this one. If I run this, of course this is doing a ramp. You can't use a ramp when you're uh, pre-drilling either. So let's just change that anyway. So let's just do a helix. Sorry. There we go. Okay. And we'll redo that. And as you can see, it's still going to helix down there. It's, it's going to ignore the drill. So always make sure the hole you're going into uh, before you mill is a large enough hole that the uh, volume mill can start doing a helix down in there inside the hole. So let's choose something that's a little bit better. So on our we have tool number five here which is the three quarter inch so we'll just stay there but on uh, the finishing or the roughing out of the pocket let's just choose uh, tool number one now one thing you have to do on the drilling side is you need to click on this tab that says pre-mill so it's exactly what it says, pre-milling. So you're pre-doing something before you're milling. And you can usually leave the default in there at 33%. That's pretty much the default in there. Make sure you check this box. So it'll know to pre-drill before it does that. And then, of course, on the volume mill, you want to make sure, sure you choose Helix down there. And you can fill in all the other parameters as you like there. So let's just... Uh, well, we'll do, we'll actually do all of them here. We'll just use wireframe this time. So now when you render that, you're going to see the drill, pre-drill all these before the end mill goes in there. So as we play this, you're going to see it's going to drill each of the holes. The end mill is going to go in that hole, and since we're stepping down a half inch at a time, that's fine. It's going down into the hole a half inch and cutting out the cavity. Then you'll notice on the next tool path here, notice it's helixing down the rest of the way. And the reason being is on the drill, if I look at the drill, which is tool number five, 
I purposely put a 100 degree angle in there so we have a really steep angle on there. So Volumeal calculates that out and instead of just plunging down at our depth and probably clogging up the end mill or, or breaking the end mill, it's going to helix that last little part there. And you can see that till it gets down to the depth that we told the um, end mill to go to. Of course, with the drill, you could stay off the bottom a little bit to keep from putting a little point in there. But as you can see, it, it goes down to the floor. And it'll do the same thing for the rest of them. Okay, and that looks really nice. So just keep in mind, we'll change these uh, tools up a little bit here. Use a little bit bigger, so maybe we'll do an inch and a quarter drill. And on the end mill, we'll choose a one inch end mill on there. Everything looks pretty good. We'll do the cut width a little bit uh, more. That's uh, tool number three, so that's a one inch. So let's just go half inch steps there and we'll just redo that and then we'll take a look at that so there we have some big holes pre-drilled holes and again you can see it's helixing down in the bottom i can turn this wireframe on here and it'll you'll be able to see this a little bit better Speed. We'll uh, show you this little zoomed up a little bit, but you, as you can see down there, it's nice doing a nice helix down there to get to the bottom and cutting out. So anyway, that's kind of how you use a volume mill with a drill. Just make sure the drill is bigger than the end mill you plan on using. And again, make sure the processes are combined together here because uh, where it decides to drill is uh, where a volume mill decides to start. So volume mill decides the tool path and then it tells the first process to drill at the very beginning of my helix, my process there. So these kind of work in conjunction with each other. Just make sure pre-mill is checked and it should work just really well with volume mill. Again, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.